ask me to please just tell you she is praying for you. I know that, uh, I want to tell you just quickly, the situation that my wife finds herself in. Uh, her godly, godly mom went home to be with the Lord Thursday evening. And normally she would be here with me. And, you know, some would say, well, you know, you shouldn't leave your wife at a time like this. When I'm finished here, I'll be driving back to Thomasville, where our family's from. We're having a memorial service for her mom today. And uh, some would say, you shouldn't leave your wife at a time like this. When my wife said, go. I'm just sorry I can't go with you. Amen. And she said, tell Tamika I'm praying for her. My wife has been a pastor's wife for 38 years. And wow. uh, so Tamika, Miss Jackie knows. <laughs> she knows. And she said, you tell Tamika I'm praying for her. We, uh, we love the Bell family and are grateful for our partnership together with them. Again, in Kingdom Work. Well, there is a word from God today. Amen. I was I was so humbled to be able to be here and to share on such a special occasion. And as I began to pray and and look through God's word, God kept taking me back to a familiar text. Uh, it's it's a text that uh, honestly for uh, many years. If you just lay my Bible down and let it fall open and fall open to this passage, it's one of my favorites. And then I, I just kept saying, well, Lord, is there is there anything different you want me to say? Is it? And here's what it came down to for me. One of my favorites from one of my favorites. <laughs> I just want to share with you from 2 Samuel chapter 23. Okay. Some will say we need to bypass the Old Testament and just preach the New Testament. Hey, I'm a New Testament Bible-believing, evangelical preacher. Yeah. But I love the Old Testament. Amen. I love it. I can camp out in the Old Testament for days and weeks at the time. <laughs> and in 2 Samuel chapter 23 there, uh, there it begins to unfold. Let me go ahead and get my glasses out. I'm no longer in denial. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it begins to unfold these, these men of David they're referred to as the mighty men of David and as we look at these men of David and some of the things that they did we, we are challenged by the examples that they said I, I, I believe we need some men like this today and I believe your pastor is one in verse 9, it says, as it introduces us here in God's Word, it says, After him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle, and the men of Israel had withdrawn. He arose and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to strip the slain. Mm. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Mm -hmm. We see in our text today a battle scene. Mm -hmm. May I propose to you that we as followers of Christ are in a battle that began in the garden. Right. It's not a new one. Right. It's, it's, it, it hadn't snuck up on anybody. Right. And if it has snuck up, up on you, then, then, then you need to start looking around a little bit more as a follower of Christ. This, this is not a new battle. The enemy is hard at work. Mm -hmm. And right now, I believe more than anything else, he wants to divide the people of God. Right. Because he knows that that's where the power is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The power is in the people of God exalting the name of God yeah. in the house of God and in the cities of God in order to honor the Lord. Yeah. And the enemy wants to divide the people of God. Yeah. We are in a battle today and I believe that there is something terribly modern in this ancient text. It says that Eleazar was there with David. Now these mighty men of David, I this is just how I think. This is how I process things. I ask a lot of questions. And one of the questions that I wanted to ask was, 
Now, why did David need these mighty men? I mean, David was a giant killer, wasn't he? Right. Uh, David uh, was, was fearless. Uh, David was the one that they sang songs about the fact that he had killed tens of thousands. David was the, was the poet. David was the, was, the, was the musician. David was, was all of these wonderful things. What did David need these mighty men for? And, and here's what the Lord shows us today. I don't care who you are. You need others around you. All right. They'll help hold you accountable and help hold your arms up. Yeah. You need those people in your life. It says he was there with David when they defied the Philistines and they they saw something in that battle that oh that the people of God should not see but but it happened let me just go ahead and give you our thought for for today my uh, my, my my thought for today is uh, wimps and warriors all right wimps and warriors and as we begin to just kind of step back and look at that battle scene that the word of god just paints for us in those two short verses there we realize that something happened that should never have happened. Now, it tells us, and I don't believe there's one idle word, one jot or tittle that's, that's not intended for our benefit or for our education or encouragement in the Word of God. Nothing's there by accident or happenstance. And, and so it tells us that Eleazar was there with David. He was there with David. So if you'll let your sanctified imagination just run for just a minute, I mean, picture him there sitting on his on his horse. I, I can't help but want to picture people on horseback. I, 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 I like that, you know. And I, 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 I can even describe the horses if you needed me to. But I, I, I picture them there on their horseback, up on the hill overlooking that battlefield. And, and, and we see the, the, the men of Israel withdraw. And what do you think that did to the countenance of the king? I can picture Eleazar turning and seeing his king heartbroken because the people of God were doing something the people of God should never do and that was retreat. And without a word, I picture Eleazar just kind of leaning forward a little bit just giving a little to his horse riding down into that battlefield. Then he stops and gets off of that horse and, and he walks out into that battlefield and, and, and for the longest time, Pastor, for the longest time, I, I believe I pictured this wrong. I pictured him going out into the middle of that battlefield and drawing his sword all by himself and looking at the, uh, the Philistine army and just saying to them, hey, hey, hey guys, come get some. That's how I had pictured that. But really when you read the text and you, you allow the, the, the word to just kind of pour over you and, and get inside of you, you begin to realize what it says. He, he, he arose and he went to the Philistines. So I can see him now in the middle of that battlefield looking at the Philistine army over there saying, hey guys, wait right there. I'll be along in just a minute. Oh, what a great man. But in order for us to really see all that God did through him, let's, let's recognize some of these folks that were in the battle that may very well be now sitting in church pews today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord help us. We see the wimps. We see the wimps. It says the men of Israel had withdrawn. You know wimps withdraw from the battle when the going gets tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know some of those folks. You, 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 listen, no, hey, hey, don't start naming names. <laughs> but you're thinking about some of them right now. Mm. Yeah. And if you're not thinking about it, if you're going, I don't know anybody like that, uh -oh. then somebody may be thinking about you. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Don't, don't be one of those that's, that's wanting to check out when the going gets a little tough. There are always those when the enemy confronts, when the enemy wants to start a battle, there are always those who want to turn and run. Wimps are often uh, actively looking for a way out instead of looking for a way through. They, uh, they, they want to play it safe. Have you, have you ever heard somebody in church say, hey, 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 Pastor, 
Let's just play it safe. <laughs> Got to play it safe. And I, I, you know, and I, and I think to myself, you know what? I'd rather play it saved. I'd rather, <laughs> oh, I'd rather act like a follower of Jesus and just trust Him and follow Him. I had somebody tell me one time, I said, no, 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 Pastor, you got to understand now, the odds aren't in your favor on that. And I thought, well, I'd rather live on God's odds. Let's, uh, uh, let's just let you do the math. It, it's true, although it's an old cliche, it's still true today. God plus nothing else is still a majority. Yeah. I'd rather be on his team. I'd rather, I'd rather be in the battle serving him. But the will say, well, we got to live safe. We 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 gotta we gotta be careful now. Uh, 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 any excuse will do for a win. To, to quit to, to quit the fight. Any excuse will do. Those people don't like me. I, I have somebody tell me one. They say, you know what? I'm not sure I like you right now. And I said, well, to be completely transparent with you, I don't like me right now either, but that doesn't change the truth. <laughs> Listen, the biggest problem I got is that guy that looks at me in the mirror when I'm shaving in the morning. I know, I am my best friend. Listen, there's, there are plenty of folks who don't like me, and I don't blame them. Yes. <laughs> Come on. I, All right. I get it. <laughs> but that's not an excuse to quit doing what the Lord's called. Right. Yeah. People say, "Hey, somebody's gonna be upset. You do that, yeah, so you do it. You're gonna upset. You're gonna upset somebody. Yeah, yeah. When you when you do that, I had a, I had a guy ask me one time. He, he said he said, preacher, are you a good mixer? <laughs> I had to, I had to think for a little bit. What did he mean by that? And then I realized that what he was asking me was. Did I get along uh, well in talking to folks? Did I could I mingle well? And I finally told him, I said, Well, I don't know if I'm a good mixer, but I've stirred a few things up. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're not somebody is always listen, if you are gonna do something to honor the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody go get mad about it. Somebody go fuss about it. You're right. And listen, it, spiritualize their watching. Right. Oh, I learned, yeah. I learned this hard way. Hey, listen, come on. You, come, yeah. you come to, you come to a, a Baptist business meeting in a white church. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, 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 I pastor in a church. Hey, I, we had church members that the FBI couldn't find with a warrant. <laughs> but you let a controversial business meeting come up, they gonna show up. They don't show up. But I just, I'm just here. To, this, this is what I'm watching. I'm just here to see what happens. I'm just going to watch. Here's, here's the problem that I have with this. The problem that I have with this is that somehow or another, we have decided that Christianity is a spectator sport. Oh. And it's not. There are wow. people that say, well, you know what? I, I go to church. That's, a, that's enough. My last, hey, I, I'm still waiting to see. I'm still praying that, that they're going to play football 
this fall. I'm, I'm holding out for it. Yeah. Everybody asked, listen, uh, my, my baby girl uh, lives in, in Gainesville and works in Gainesville in Jacksonville. Uh, she worked for a little, little magazine called Sports Illustrated. She, okay. uh, she covers the Jacksonville <laughs> Jaguars. Okay. All she right. also is doing a lot of work covering the Florida Gators. Yeah. Which she's been doing that for several years now. The, 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 the gig with the Jaguars is new to her. But listen, everybody is asking me, what does Cassidy say they're going to do this fall? Because, <laughs> you know, she, she's in on the meetings. She's, she's writing articles about it. And she's got her theory, and it's pretty good. And I don't take time to, to get into that. But, but I, I want them to play. I want them to, but let me just uh, explain something to you. If they play, and I watch the game on television, or I go to the game, she's able to get daddy tickets. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, listen, hey, she's at a point in her life now where I'm glad I, I treated her well when she was going. <laughs> she's not going to get daddy. <laughs> I don't go to the game to watch the huddle. But watchers will come to church and just watch everybody. Yeah. They oh. always look. Did you see what she had on? Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! Did you Did you see who he was sitting with? Can you believe? It? Did you see what they did? Always watching, watching, watching. Listen, when when you just show up for church and that's it, that's like just watching going to a football game and watching the huddle. This is a holy huddle. But I want to see them break home, get out there, and get the game over with. Yeah. The watchers want their place in the stands, but warriors want their place on the field. Yeah. Come on, come on. And warriors will have a huddle just long enough to say, break, break the huddle, let's get going. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Watchers have a watch word. Amen. We'll see. Mm -hmm. That's their watch word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not we'll do, not we'll go, not we'll give, not we'll try, not we'll share. We'll, 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 we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. You, you, you've heard that, church, haven't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, I got a great ministry opportunity. I, got, I, I feel like God's really leading us to do something exciting in a new ministry area. And, and man, I just think it's going to be great. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yes, Man, you got one. There was watchers at this battle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you want to, you can close your eyes and just in your mind's eye, you can see them lying mm -hmm. on the hillside up there. Yeah. What's Eliezer? I think he's doing. What? What's? What? what, what, what why? He, he's going down there by himself. Well, that that fool. <laughs> he can get himself killed. He's one of our best warriors. I want to just sit here. I want to just see what happens. They always want to be you. And watchers always want to criticize yeah. and compare yeah. and uh -huh. then offer commentary. Oh. They always have an opinion, but it's always on something somebody else is actually doing. Yeah, yeah. They just yeah. watch it. third group that was there that day. Jesus. And those were the waiters. Mm -hmm. While some were watching, others were waiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you know that there were waiters there? Those that just waiting in the wing. How do you know they were there? Because the Word of God tells us that. Ah, in the verse that we just read there at the end of verse 10, it says, and, and, the, and the men of Israel did what? They returned only to strip the slain. Yeah. Mm. They were waiting in the wings to enjoy the spoils of victory. Yeah. Wow. They just waiting to go out there. And listen, hey, 
the, the, the wankers are always going to be around quickly when the battle's been won. Once the victory comes, the, the wankers are going to be the first ones to show up. And they're going to be standing around and as others show up, they start talking about what happened like they was part of it. They start telling the story like it was they <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit, man. It was touch and go, but uh, L.A.'s are to us. We, uh, <laughs> we got down here and we took care of business. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, bad, but here we got some spoils. Yeah, man. yeah. I'm going to leave with my pockets full. I'm going to make a profit off of something somebody else did. All right. And I'm going to claim the victory like it was mine. Come on. That is so good, boy. Waiters yes. worry about who gets credit. And they want to take credit for something they had not done. And they're always around when the victory was like, hey, <laughs> you know, Pastor, I was, I was with you the whole time. <laughs> and I was supporting you. You didn't see me, but I was supporting you. You were right. I didn't see you. I didn't see you. I didn't hear you. I couldn't, I couldn't find you. I, I called for you and couldn't find you. <laughs> well, I was with you the whole time. soldier entangles himself mm -hmm. with the affairs uh, of the daily distractions right. if you will. Right. A good soldier is going to concentrate on the battle at hand. Uh, Paul often would use great illustrations, rich illustrations and, and, and he would use illustrations that, that were athletic. I'm, I'm going to run a good race. He'd use agricultural, talking about planting seeds. Mm -hmm. But then he'd use uh, army or, or military illustrations or be a good soldier. In, in, in fact, he goes on and tells him, as a soldier, in verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 3, as a soldier, you better know how to divide the word. Yes. Then, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 7, he speaks as a soldier when he says, the time for my departure has come. I fought the good fight. Then he speaks as an athlete. I finished the course. <laughs> yeah. So Paul tells us we're still called to be soldiers. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I love this text. I, we, the, the 37 men in 2 Samuel 23. And we look at it one of them for just a few minutes this morning. So much we can learn from these men. So much. But, but let me just tell you. I know that warriors love peace more than they love war. Mm. That's right. But they love peace so much they're willing to go to war to get it. <laughs> they fight for peace. Yeah. I want to tell you something else that's important. If you, don't, if you don't get anything else, take this away from here. A warrior serves at the pleasure of his king. All right. All right. A warrior serves at the pleasure of his king. I, I, I want to serve at the 
pleasure of King Jesus. What are you going to do today? Whatever my king tells me to do. All right. Where are you going to go today? Wherever my king tells me to go. You got any battles you need to fight today? I don't know. I'm waiting on my king to give me my assignments. We serve at the pleasure of the king. We don't serve at the pleasure of public opinion. We don't serve at the pleasure of prosperity, of position, of popularity. We serve at the pleasure of the king. End of discussion. There's nothing, there's nothing beyond that for the warrior of the cross. These men in 2 Samuel 23 are, are, are very much like those that we see in Hebrews chapter 11. They, they're not nearly <laughs> as concerned with whether they live or die as they are with how they live or die. Wow. It, it's been said, maybe you've said it, maybe you've said it. And I, 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 I just want to maybe let the Holy Spirit give us a check in our spirit together. But many times we'll say something like this. A man's got to live. No, my friend, a man's got to die. Ah, the Word of God says it's appointed it's once yeah, yeah. unto man mm -hmm. to die. Right. Now there's a whole lot of other things you can do multiple times in your life. Some good, some bad. Right. Uh, there's some things that you may have done in your life and you look back and go, I can't believe that I, I did that three times and I'm still alive. I don't know. But, right. but here's what we do know. If the Lord Jesus carries, every one of us have the same appointment. Come on. So my question for you today is, uh, not if I watch you, can I see what you're living for? Because we can. You, you just watch somebody for a little while, Charlotte. You can see what they're living for. But my question today is, if I watch you, can I see what you're willing to die for? Can I see what you're willing to give your life for in the working of Matthew King's your body? Is that what the warrior is going to do? Wow. The warrior runs to the battle when others are running from the battle. The wimp says any excuse will do. The warrior says no excuse will do. Yeah. Hey, the odds aren't in your favor. It's all right. Hey, you're not going to Hey, listen, you can read on down and read about Benaiah who chased a lion into a pit on a snowy day and no. killed it with a stick. That's right. No. 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 The odds aren't in your face. Hey, listen, it's okay. That's okay. Hey, you could die doing that. Then I win. <laughs> if we believe what we really say we believe in the Lord, then death for us is And the Bible says, and God brought about a great victory that day. That's right. A warrior don't care who gets credit. As long as God gets the glory. Eleazar went down there by himself. He fought the Philistines by himself. He killed every one of them by himself. And God brought about a great victory that day. And if you ask Eleazar, hey, Eleazar, man, you fought good today. What, what an incredible battle to watch. I was one of them watchers up on the hill, man. That was, that was something else. Uh, you, you did good. You won a great battle. I didn't, I didn't win a battle today. Mm -hmm. I just fought a battle. God won a battle. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. We, start needing, we need to start giving God credit yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. for the battles that he's won. It says 
in that text that he fought so long and so hard that his hand clung to the sword. Mm. You, you, you can picture it, I know, but his, 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 his muscles had held so tightly to that sword that his, that his muscles had contracted around the handle of it. Mm. And he couldn't let it go. <laughs> he couldn't release his sword. Uh -huh. This is why this message makes me think about Leon Bell Jr. <laughs> because when you got a man of God, you can't tell where he stops yeah. and the sword starts. Mm -hmm. They become one. Mm -hmm. They become one. You ever been working on a vehicle and you get down in a tight place with a wrench and you're trying to turn a wrench or screw something and, you, and your hand begins to cramp? You got to pull it out and right. get it yeah. cramp out. Right. Well, multiply that by a thousand times and you can understand what Eleazar was experiencing with that sword. Mm. Wow. I love this book. <laughs> oh, I love this book. Do, 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 do you hear what the Bible refers to itself as? A sword. Mm -hmm. So for the man of God, you ought to be able to look at him and not tell where the man stops and the sword starts. Yeah. He'll have such a grip on his sword that he can't let it go. Give answers like this to questions and situations. Hey, what do you think about this? Well, the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, have you got an opinion on this? Well, I may have an opinion, but the Bible says. Uh -huh. Hey, I, I, listen, he, he and Tamika are doing so much for marriage. I am so encouraged and I follow yeah. them on social media in the work that they're doing uh, in, in, the, in the sacred institution of marriage. My Lord, we need to do so much to fight for homes and marriages and families. That's the actions of a man and woman of God. Yeah. And you're doing it in a biblical way. Yeah. Man, I, I, I applaud what you're doing there. I, I, I heard you preach, man, and I know that you love this book. These, listen, hey, these are the marching orders of the church. These are the sweetie people that will stand beside and behind these holy desks and preach the unashamed truth of the word of God. People say, well, why are we going to talk to Pastor Liam? I don't want to talk to him. Why not? I know what he's going to say. What's he going to say? He's going to say something about the Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not a bad reputation to have. At all. So many times though, we'll try to Thank you. we'll try to clean up our sword. Oh my word. You know, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the help me. Help me. Listen, this sermon's about about seven or eight more minutes with amens and about 25 without them. Amen? With Amen. Them. All right, so take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our yeah, yeah, yeah. weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we fight with. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and merit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh my word! The word of God can do all of that. The word of God can do all of that. Yes, it can. Man, listen, we need to get back to the book this afternoon. I'll be, I'll be doing my mother-in-law's memorial service. One of the things I'm going to share with the people that will be there is that uh, she had a habit of reading all the way through the Bible, yeah. making notes, underlining, highlighting, reading from cover to cover. And then she'd give that Bible away. Yeah. 
she can give it to somebody. Wow. Oh, wow. This afternoon, I'll be holding a Bible that she read all the way through in 1960. Wow. Oh, wow. And then gave to my precious wife. When she was old enough to understand how valuable that was. My wife possesses that Bible. But here's, here's, here's what we've learned. We've been doing a lot of research just trying to make sure because I, listen, I, I, I don't want to be uh, guilty of just throwing out a statistic or something that, that's not accurate. But we know for a fact, having read from cover to cover, having underlined and made notes and words of encouragement, I know for a fact she's given away over 40 Bibles. Ooh. And we think oh, wow. it's closer to 60. Wow. Wow. Some years, she would give away two Bibles in a year. I want I to see a Bible that's kind of tattered and torn. Looks like, looks like it's been in a battle. Looks like it's won some victories. Now they, there you go. There you go. And it looks like it's, it, 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 it's ready to fight again. Because I'm going to tell you, those those old tattered, torn, worn Bibles are still the best weapons in the world. Oh yeah. yeah. Best. You know, people will go to battle. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take my sword with me. Okay. Let's let's go to battle. Hey, I'm I'm fighting battle. And here's here's what the sword has taught me. Uh, my sword has taught me that uh, God just wants me to be happy. <laughs> and I'm like, please, 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 show me that verse. I want that verse too. Yeah. I want, but, but I haven't found it yet. Show me that verse. Because here's what I've learned. As I study this blessed book, as I take this weapon out and read it, God's not near as interested in you being happy as He is in you being holy. Oh, yeah. Oh, Which, by the way, leads to happiness. When you're holy, you find joy. Mm -hmm. People say, well, listen, the, 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 the Word of God told me that I need it. No, it didn't. No, no, it didn't. No, no, it didn't. You know, and I, and I try to do it with a smile on my face and love in my heart, but just say, no, in Jesus' name, that ain't, that ain't what the Bible told you. <laughs> that is not what the Bible said. Just follow this book. This I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm grab my weapon. Yeah. I'm going to go to war. Let me tell you the worst thing you can do with this blessed book. The worst thing you can do with it is trying to use it as a weapon when you don't know how to use it. Oh. I mean, I get amazed at people going into battle. They go, hey, I'm ready to go to battle, man. I'm ready I'm ready to go to war. And I, I got my sword. I'm going, let's go. I got my sword. Ah. That's what that's a bread knife. <laughs> what, what are you doing with that little knife on the back? Well, I wasn't planning on spreading much. <laughs> you can't go to battle with that. But there are people that try to do it. Listen, there are people that will try to act spiritual. There are people that try to sound spiritual. When in reality, they're completely misquoting and misteaching the Word of God. And they'll say, listen, I'm going to go into battle. Here's what, here's what they'll do. They'll, they'll, they'll head into battle and say, hey, I got my sword and I'm ready. I'm going to war. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you know, man, that ain't going to hurt nobody. You're not going to accomplish anything with that. Jesus. No. No, I, had, I had a pastor tell me one time, he said, I just don't feel like uh, people uh, listen to what I have to say and I'm going to go because it's got no teeth. Come on! Come on! Stop trying to win a popularity contest. Listen, we got we got pulpits filled with peacocks. Oh! Listen, I know some I know some preachers that can strut sitting down. They do it. Stop trying to tell people. Stop trying to tickle their ears. Come on, Pastor Roy. You can't walk in with a sword like that and expect to do something. Man, stop trying to fight battles with the wrong Listen, if you're going to go to war, if you're going to fight a battle, you better.
gotta go with something. You can't have a victory. Come on. You better pull out something that's gonna let folks know I'm serious. I'm not here to make you happy. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here so you can leave church today going, hey man, I sure do. I just feel sweet. That was just a sweet, sweet time in church today. No, I'm here to rightly divide the word of truth. And if you yeah. do that, people will not be able to tell where you stop and the sword starts. God, give us some warriors in church. We need warriors in the body of Christ today. We need men and women who are ready to go to the front line with the truth of God's word unapologetically. Yeah. I believe that your pastor is one of those. Yeah. yeah. If I didn't believe that, I'm going to be honest with you. I've got other things I could be doing today. Amen. Amen. Not where I want to be. Because I want to encourage another warrior. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Two, two years, man. Stay in the house. Don't quit. You're going to feel like quitting. Don't look at the odds. It's just going to scare you. Don't look at how many folks are happy. Listen, I'm not trying to get you in trouble with these folks, but don't worry about how many of them are happy. Listen, if you made them happy here, they're going to get unhappy again in a few days. Amen. You serve at the pleasure of King Jesus. You do what he says do. You go where he says go. Be the man he called you to be. He has, he has partnered you with one of the choice saints in a godly, godly life. He's, he's given you to make a, as a partner in ministry to walk through this way. Brother, you got everything you need. You got folks sitting in this room that love you. You fight the fight. You fight the fight. Church, I'm going to ask you if you would bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I'm going to give you a parting thought. Physical sword can strike the living and make them dead. A spiritual sword will strike the dead and make them living. We need warriors who are right in the battle. Not concerned about winning, but concerned about being faithful. Amazing.